All right, we're going to do the rear fuel filter now. I originally recorded this audio while I was under the truck. And after listening to it, it sounded so pathetic. I decided to do it in here in the Bob Ross Memorial Studio. Some of you guys say I sound like Bob Ross. Although I think maybe that was a while back. And lately I probably sound more like Grandpa Jones. Anyway, we're going to get her done. And the first thing you got to do is disconnect this little connection here. And there's a little tab there. If you push down on it with a screwdriver, which you see me struggling to do with my old shaky hands, you'll get in there and twist it while you're pushing down on that little tab. And it'll pop right loose, and then you can pull it loose. But don't pull on the wire. Pull on the switch like that. The back one's really easy. It's a hard one to get at, but there's not much you can do to really screw it up. The front one, there's all kinds of things that can get you in trouble there, as we talked about. I used to use a hose to drain that down to a tub or whatever, but the problem with that is that darn valve leaks from the top and you still get leakage. If you're lucky, it'll run down the outside of the hose. But what I do now is I put a tub um, right underneath it and just drop the whole darn mess into a tub, or actually like kind of like a little bucket. This is it right here. And if you get the right size, it'll fit right on top of your drive shaft and you don't even have to hold it or anything. It'll just sit there. And I'll remove that sensor and change that O-ring and whatnot after I get it out. And that way I don't have to spend a bunch of time working overhead like this. I use this rigid strap wrench that I got years ago for my 5.9 when they had that filter up in the front. I call it a cage and IQ test because, you know, it's a little tricky to put on but it will not slip. I don't care what filter you're working with, it just does not slip. Once you get it handy like that, you'll notice that you're gonna start getting more fluid out as the air comes in through the threads. You can either shut the valve or just wait and let it drain. I just usually wait and let it drain. The nice thing about using that little tub that's directly underneath you right there is that you don't have to worry about disconnecting the hose or, you know, anything else that's going to drop right down into the bucket. Unfortunately, my photographer is not showing that properly. I guess I need to start paying him more. I use Mopar filters because it's the closest to me to get, but you can use the Raycor or the fleet guard. Doesn't matter because they're all made by Raycor. The newest 6.7s, the 2019 and up, have a different fuel filter on them. It's made by somebody else. I'm not sure who makes it, but it's not a Raycor anymore. Bummer, because it's a really good filter. I always lube up the O-rings first. You can see I'm pouring some uh, mobile 10W30 in there with my old shaky hands and lubing it up. Any kind of oil, it doesn't matter, including the front. It's not going to, you know, taint the diesel fuel or anything like that. Uh, I think it helps it come loose when you get get time to take it off. So that's probably the benefit. And it does, and oil does help seal too. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but you can pick up these fuel filters for somewhere between 100 and 125 bucks on uh, eBay or Amazon or wherever. Uh, you got to be careful, though. Make sure that you're getting something that's from a reputable place because there's a lot of counterfeit stuff running around out there, including Amazon. And, you know, I've seen these these aftermarket uh, filters that are just, I would never put that on my truck. Uh, if there's one thing you want to spend the bucks on, it's these fuel filters. I think the cheapest I've ever found them was $105 for a set. I've heard people get 
better prices than that, but beware if you get in a set of fuel filters for less than a hundred dollars. In fact, it looks like the prices are going up, not down slightly, but maybe it's the pandemic. I don't know. Anyway, I put everything back together kind of like it came off. Uh, be a little careful about uh, tightening up that o-ring there and that plastic. I tend to put things probably a little bit tighter than they need to be, but that's just my nature. Uh, as long as you don't get carried away, you're fine. And you go back on just like you took it off. This is probably the only part that you might need to be careful about. I've never heard of anybody cross-threading those threads there, but they are very fine threads and it needs to go on really easy. It is possible to kind of hang it crossways there and if you did continue to force it, you probably would screw something up, but uh, you know, it should just be very easy to screw on. You do have to push up though to unseat that check valve, otherwise, otherwise you'll spin it all day long and get nowhere. On either the front or the back filter, you don't need to worry about putting diesel in them before you put them on. Uh, because the nice thing about these electric fuel pumps is you can prime the engine without having a crank on it. And you don't need a plunger pump or anything like in the old days. And then we tighten it up by hand. The danger of putting a wrench on it, and there's really no need to, in that position, you can get a pretty good grip on it, even with my old shaky man hands. But uh, the reason you don't want to put a wrench on it is there's a good chance you'll kink it. And, you know, I don't know what that's doing to the inside of it. And then we just plug it back in and make sure your little petcock's closed and we're good to go. To reset the fuel filter is pretty simple. Uh, that blinking red light is the GoPro and that white back there is the amateur photographer taking these videos he's I need to fire him but anyway uh, it's really simple you can see I had 24 percent although I say simple but sometimes I miss the first time and I'll show you here I think I did on this one here's the uh, live commentary uh, for your enjoyment so just going by the instructions it says hold to reset all and that's this arrow here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now confirm reset. So that's a down arrow. Okay, and then right again, confirm. And it didn't work. All right, whole reset all. Confirm. There we go. You just can't beat the excitement of that live action, can you? I appreciate you guys watching my video. And until next time, we'll see you on down the road. Adios.